AI functions are great for situations where you need more flexibility than what an LLM can give you or more flexibility than what a traditional function in a programming language can give you. Oh, son of a bitch. Typical use cases would be where you need to enhance your LLM answer with data from your database or the internet. And with the Elmer package, it's really easy to use these kind of things. So let me show you how that works. All right, the first thing that we need is a function that we can connect with AI. And here I've created the get weather data function that can extract weather data for specific coordinates. So if we execute this stuff here, then you see that we get a JSON output. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. And if we wanted to make this into a nice tibble, we could throw this to the JSON light function where we use the from JSON command so that it now is the data frame, which I don't like, so that I make it into a tibble. And that way you see that we have all our data that our AI should hopefully use to give the user a nice response. And here I've also added a list of other coordinates that we could use. You could use the ones for New York City, stick them in here, and then get the weather data for New York City instead. So now that we have a function that can give us weather data, let's check out what would go wrong if we tried to use the AI without this function. So let's just, as always, with the Elmer package, let's first load it, and then we can create a chat using the chat open AI function and for now let's just leave the system prompt empty so that way we do have a chat object and we can take the chat object and use the chat method to ask it what is the current weather in Chicago and if we run this we see that it takes a few seconds and then it tells us that it is unable to provide real-time weather updates so what we can do now is to tell our chat object about this get weather function so that it can plug in coordinates run the results and then pass that into the chat so that chat gpt can generate an answer and to make things even simpler i have created a get weather data washington function that doesn't have any arguments it just can be run as is and if you execute this you see that you get the exact same result as you'd get with get weather data but for Washington only you cannot put any arguments in here so you could make it also into a table and then you'd see that's the same format basically by the way if you're curious how these functions work they are hidden in these code chunks here you don't have to understand them now but if you want to take a look at them you can follow the link in the description to see what the code is anyway let's take our simple function and register it with our chat object to do so we take chat object and then call register tool and in there we need to stick in a tool definition and in Elmer this works via the tool function and if you take a look at the documentation it does exactly what we want it defines an R function used by a chatbot and in the examples you can see here that it basically first needs the function then it takes a description of what this function is supposed to do and then it takes a description of all the argument names that this function has using specific types this kind of information tells GPT in what situation it it might be useful to use the function and the description for these types tell GPT how to fill in these arguments. You can try to make your life a little bit easier by using the create tool dev function and sticking in the function that you want to create a tool definition for. If you execute this, you'll see that you get a code here, but this is GPT generated. So you really have to check what we get here. And actually right now our function isn't that well documented. So chat GPT also doesn't know what to put in there. So let's just put in as a description something simple like this gets the weather forecast for the Washington Monument and with that we can fill the register tool function let's just stick this in here format this a little bit nicer and now if we run this part we have registered the function with GPT I always say function because I feel like this is closer to the regular terminology that we as our users like to use because we really register a function here but notice that it always says tool here because in the the AI word people like to call this tool so it is a tool that is used by the AI just a different word in my opinion it's just a function feel free to use whatever terminology you like best so now we could ask it once again what is the current weather in Chicago let's see what it does it tells us that it is unable to provide current weather data for Chicago and that's the right thing to do because in our description we have said that we can only get weather forecast for the Washington Monument so let's make sure that we ask for the weather at the Washington Monument and let's try this again and now we suddenly get a meaningful response but of course we have to check whether this is actually true so let's have a look at our forecast here and the most recent entry here is means 32 degrees Fahrenheit which is 
is also true. It says mostly cloudy and we have a zero rain probability, which is also in here. Nice. You've now seen how easy it is to enhance your AI capabilities with traditional functions. But it's important to understand that the function isn't actually called by the AI. It just fills out the arguments for you and lets Elmer or R execute the code on your computer. And then the result, the JSON of that output, of that function output, is then sticked into the chat so that ChatGPT then knows the results from the function and can generate an answer based on that content. So all of this happens in the background and it's important to understand that the AI doesn't actually execute this function. In fact, everything happens on your computer. And this is why this get weather data function, when you call it, gives us the results in a JSON format. The reason is that AIs are pretty familiar with the JSON format. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. So what you want to do is to make sure that your functions create a JSON output format. This is a pain when you want to work with this data later on. So then you have to transform it from JSON to a tibble. So that's why we have this code here. But for the AI, it works better when you use the JSON format here. And in the case you're wondering how do I generate a JSON from a tibble or a data frame? Well, just like there is the from JSON function, there is also the to JSON function. So if we take a look at our function, functions here, you see that the last call is just a call to the to JSON function where we stick in the data frame that we have or rather the tibble that we have. And then the pretty is true is just for formatting purposes that it looks nice when we have an output here. So that's how you can easily modify your functions that you create to not return a data frame but a JSON format. And this is then what GPT can use to give you a nicer reply. All right, cool. Now that we have this covered, let's try to make our example a little bit more complicated. Let's try try to let GPT also choose the place where we want to get weather data for. And there are two things we have to do for that. First, we need to adjust the system prompt to tell GPT that it knows these specific coordinates. So inside of the system prompt, we say something like you are a weather forecast bot and you know the coordinates of the following locations. And then you just stick in what we have here. So if we rerun this, we have a new chat object with a new system prompt. And now comes step number two, namely making sure that we register a tool with this new chat object. But this time we take the more complicated function that is get weather data that can also use an argument. If we take a look at this function, at the code at least, we see that it has one argument called chords. And I've also put in some comments here that that describes what this function does using the Roxygen format. If you don't know it, don't worry. It's just a specific format to describe parameters of a function or to describe the return value of a function. These are actually the kind of things that are used to create the documentation. So all of the things that you see in the documentation really are just described by these kind of notations here. And then using specific rendering tools, they will turn into a function description like this. Anyway, my hope now is that with this new get weather data that is also more described in terms of parameters, we can make our life a little bit easier and use the create tool definition function again and it returns better results. Let's try this. So let's minimize this here and then let's use the create tool definition function. And in there we stick the get weather data function. Unfortunately, this didn't help us too much here, but I guess it's good for having the general structure first. So let's stick this in here and then let's clean this up. Let's remove this type unknown. Let's do a little bit of formatting here. And then we just have to use one of the other types that we want to use. Really what this function currently expects is a character entry with a comma separated list of the coordinates of the place we're looking at. So if we go through the types, we see here that there is a type string which corresponds to what a character is. In most other programming languages, characters are described as strings. So here apparently the terminology from other programming languages was used. So let's stick this in here. And in there we can stick in something like like a string containing two comma separate coordinates. And with that, we are ready to register our tool. And now we can ask ChatGPT something like, okay, what's the weather at the Washington Monument? And now we also might ask other things like, what's the current weather in Chicago? So here it says it is cloudy with a temperature of 29 degrees Fahrenheit, no chance of rain. So let's check this. The coordinates for Chicago are this. And if we stick this in here and run this code, we see that, okay, it's 29 degrees Fahrenheit, no chance of rain, and it's cloudy. Sweet. Now let's do something like, what's the 
weather in Chicago at 6 p.m. Maybe let's even do Los Angeles to try some of the other places we have specified. So now we see that it tells us at 6 p.m. Los Angeles the weather is expected to be partly cloudy with a temperature of 57 degrees Fahrenheit and a 1% chance of rain. But remember this get weather data gives us a whole bunch of information for different hours of the day. So we should check if GPT really was able to choose the correct information from the data we provide. So let's stick in the coordinates for Los Angeles. That's all the data and now let's filter it and we can just use the str detect function on the time column to look for t18 because 6 p.m should be specified as t18 here or rather 18 colon 00, 00 and so on but we don't need that. Now if we run this we see here that it says 57 degrees one percent chance of rain and partly cloudy and this is exactly what gpt replied to us. So this worked pretty smoothly and you now have an idea of how you can enhance your GPT or your AI with functions that an AI usually cannot do. And really the magic to this is to just register a tool using the tool function and specifying descriptions of the function and of the arguments that it needs with using special types. And these types are something we'll cover in the next video of this series because this can also really help to extract information from lots of text like PDFs, images and so on and bring this into a formatted structure like a table. But that's a story for next time. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see that. And with all of that said, I say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.